Hello and welcome to Ami um, Amit. Today I'm meeting someone, a funny guy. Uh, stick around and find out who it is after this short break. Welcome back. MJ. Hi. I mean, I mean, growing up, uh, anytime I heard MJ, it was Michael Jackson, yeah, but yeah. you are uh, MJ the comedian. Yeah. What's your MJ for? We need to change the narrative. And then I like the way people would actually associate your name to uh, legends. So eventually it means uh, I'm um, more of a legend. Uh, right. So yeah. <laughs> so, so when you associate my name to uh, MJ Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan, I feel, I feel very great. But then, if you know the full meaning, you will be disappointed. Oh, tell us, tell us. <laughs> but then it's my name, though. Um, I'm Musa Junior. Yeah. Musa Jr. Yes, yes. Uh, I was named after my grandfather, uh, who was Musa. So, yes. So, when did uh, all of this come together for you? Uh, I mean, so most of us saw you online yeah. and we grew up, we grew to. Uh, know, but for you, how did it start comedy? Um, myself, I would say um, I started from church. I, uh, growing up, uh, I was um, in the Sunday school, and uh, you know they normally give you uh, these roles to play. And when it's time for convention, we have other branches coming to the church, and everyone will be excited to see me because I was um, very smallish. And when I'm leading the crew, I, I actually entertain them, and then they'll be spreading, you know, those times the thousand CD uh, paper and stuff. Yeah, so the, the the joy that comes with it, I I I think that was what even pushed me more to uh, pursue it. So um, I got to G uh, junior high school. I said, okay, I'm going to be an actor. I want to be like the Maji, the Van Vika. But one teacher told me I should go and look into the mirror. I think twice. So when I looked at myself in the mirror, I looked at Maji again i said no no i have to do something with my life <laughs> if you do i want to be an actor i, I can still be but uh, those roles that they play looking at me tell me you're fine boy i think you don't have to be fine boy to act yeah but looking at our industry you need to be a fine boy to act um i mean you talked about how you you had that sort of uh formation from church yeah. are you still in, in connection with the church show. because i've seen some of the things you put out and some yeah. of the church will go wow <laughs> yeah. I, I i used to be a church rat mm -hmm. but then growing up and then uh, understanding how life is basically i feel um the church is overhyped and then um, there are a couple of things that happen there that um, we seriously need to really understand some of the things the pastors or the leaders of the church know that this is not good for the people. But per whatever they are looking for, they would um, just move away from it and give you what they want you to learn. So they're not doing it. It's not so scripture-based You get it. Anymore. So now they are more focused on uh, carnality, mm -hmm. more focused on what uh, personally they will gain, what they will gain for their family, what they will gain for uh, whatever agenda they have. But I feel growing up, um, church was more spiritual when you compare to now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now people would even just go to church and then be checking how you look like. And they would have discussions going on. And see, you would even hear people, excuse me, say elders of the church doing those things. Mm -hmm. And I feel a church is supposed to be a family where they don't see you in church. I haven't been in church for more than a year, two years now. And no one from my church has even called to ask, oh, we've not been seeing you at church. Is that supposed to be a family? No, a family, when they don't see you one or two days, they would equally check up on you. But have they been watching and leaving comments on your skits? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, because, yeah. yeah. Let, let's go back to the comedy. Yeah. So uh, at what point did you decide to start with the skits? Mm -hmm. And what was that breakthrough sort of skit that made people take notice? So um, after uh, senior high school, um, I had um, gone for some academy training and that was Kibati Academy of Performing Arts. And so I was learning more of acting and I was always funny to him. So he said, I should try stand up. 
So I tried the stand-up comedy at uh, Mirage Hotel inside this little room. Mm -hmm. I performed and he was like, yo, you have to take this serious. But I saw that the stand-up was not really in the market. And if I want to really do commercialize it, I need to venture the other um, side of comedy. So I decided, okay, let me start doing some skits. So I did a couple of skits, but the skits that really went viral, that, that, that got uh, people to me, got uh, uh, people's attention to me was um, the uh, Ebola skits. I, when the Ebola outbreak uh, came on, I did a skit. I wanted to create awareness, but at the same time, make some jokes out of it. So um, I was in the car and there was this pastor who was preaching actually. And, and when he was done, there was this uh, guy who was also selling med drugs and stuff and telling them that this can even cure the new uh, virus and things that is in town. Then I had a call. I to, the guy so he just came from the hospital and they said that uh, he is HIV is positive. I said, oh, you are lucky. I was like loud. You know, a typical uh, Ghanaian would, how he would speak on the phone. I was loud. So they were all quietly listening to me. I said, oh, you are even lucky. I'm just coming from the hospital myself. I'm in a Trotsky. And the doctor confirmed that uh, Ebola, I have it. <laughs> you, could, you, you could feel the break. And how the driver was the first person to get down. Mm -hmm. The next person to get down was not even the mate. The mate was at the entrance. The malam was selling the medicine <laughs> got out <laughs> before he, you get it. So that, that one went, it really went viral and people started paying attention to uh, my work. Good. I mean, you talked about even church and how times have changed and their mode of operation is also changing. Yeah. Comedy itself is also evolving yeah. and we realize that social media is highlighting a lot of talent. Yeah. Uh, how is that playing to your advantage so far? I would say that um, the traditional medium events uh, really helped me. I would be sincere. I think um, social media has done me more good than, excuse me, say harm. Even though I've had a couple of challenges, I think um, social media really got me to where I am now. Because if not for social media, uh, I don't think the traditional medium would even spread my contents like social media is doing. So social media, I would say, is the best and it has really helped me. When I want to push my events in social media, I have a, 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 an annual work that I used to do. I, I'm, I'm returning, I'm doing it again this year. Dashiki work with MJ Recom. I have thousands of people. If you check online, you would see. I don't do radio, I don't do TV. It's just my social media platforms. But as you got to a point where people realize this is good, I had uh, some small interviews on there. These are traditional uh, platforms, yeah. And one other interesting thing about social media is, of course, uh, feedback and uh, as a comedian yeah. it's going to be in your face that's funny that's not funny that's yeah. rubbish how do you uh, take such comments and how do you build on them myself I, I think um, we we are all emotional beings mm -hmm. sometimes um, you would you would act very tough out there but inwardly <laughs> you are very soft mm -hmm. and there's no one on this planet who say they don't have a soft spot. Sometimes the comments, we, some of them, we just ignore them. Some of them, myself, I just take it personal. And me, I would, didn't retaliate there. I might reply you in your DM, ask for your opinion, reason, what got you to say that? Mm -hmm. And probably if I can learn from that. So I hardly like fight someone who has a negative comment mm -hmm. under my video. That is your opinion, and that's from your point. But I have a lot of people commenting positively. Mm -hmm. So, one, I can decide to ignore you. Two, if I really want to learn and to understand things, I would just enter into your DM, ask you, oh, boss, what's up? I, can, I go to the extent of even, uh, getting their contacts and then have a vibe with them. So, me, I'm very cool with any comments they give me under my video. What, what is one comment from uh, a fan or the public that really got you? It was good and it got you. And also on the flip side, one that was bad that really got you, <laughs> that you still remember. Uh, 
Okay, so the 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 the, the good one first. The, <laughs> one. <laughs> the good one. Um, it wasn't uh, a comment though. The person sent me a DM, and he lives around here. When we were coming, I just remember, Chris. Uh, he got into my DM. He said, "You saved my life." Mm -hmm. I asked him why. He said, "I nearly committed suicide. I didn't know about you. I was just going through the Instagram um, videos, and I chanced on your videos. So I watched." Throughout the night, I was just watching your videos. Reason we had some small issues and things. And that moment, he had actually bought some drugs mm -hmm. that he wanted to take and sleep, and that's it. Mm -hmm. He just saw my videos, went through my, 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 my page, watched a couple of them. So in the morning, he sent me that message. So we should meet up. And then we met uh, that night. We went to Starbite. We took some. Um, drinks and we had fun. So since then, we've been connecting. Yeah. So at least I know my work is uh, not just making people laugh, but also uh, like uh, doing what it has to do. Mm -hmm. You get it. And then this one bad comment I had was um, I used to impersonate uh, Shatawali mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, those times when he was more about uh, his poo and he was coming live on Facebook and. So I had a missing tooth though, but I fixed it. So I impersonated Wali. Like I said, Kwasia, we see a tutu. Kwasia, we see a tutu. You don't go find something better than do. Yes, I remember everything. <laughs> I know, social media people can be very, very and I even made a screenshot of it. Oh, I man. said, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I for knowing how they just go beat up. But it's one of those things. Um, at that moment, I was really pissed. But as time went on, I, I, I saw the funny part of it. I was like, mm -hmm. well, we, maybe he was even joking about it. And maybe I wasn't in the right frame of mood. That's why I interpreted that as a, a different uh, this thing. So I just let go. By she. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, one of the things we've also seen within the community is that you guys like to collaborate. Yeah. And um, uh, when you're doing such collaborations, what do you look out for? And who are some of the people you've worked with and perhaps people you are looking forward to collaborate with in terms of? So um, um, when it comes to um, creating of uh, content in Ghana, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm one of the old guys. When you look at the new crops of um, content creators, I'm one of the old guys, with the exception of, you see, Calibos is now coming back again. But with the exception of Calibos, I think I'm the oldest when you are talking about content creators now. Yes, and uh, I've worked with basically all, all the guys, because the truth is, I, I'm I'm so open to them that mm -hmm. anytime they need me or I need them, I just go straight to their. Mm -hmm. Whereas they used to be in my house, like we used to vibe. So whereas we've shot um, made in Ghana, we've shot um, 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 SDK, like almost all the guys. But I'm open for any other person who wants to collaborate, yes. Because at the end of the day, we are entertainers and we need to entertain the people. But sometimes, you see, you create a script that um, the character that you need is not um, probably worse. You need a made in Ghana character. And sometimes you pick this person, this person will be like, oh, like this thing, you should have called me. But per the description of the story, I don't need you. And sometimes it's raised some agitations and stuff, but it's one of those things. So you have to understand, even in comedy, there's proper casting. It's not just a matter of pulling everybody in there. No, no, no. It, it, the work is very serious. It's very serious. But sometimes you will just take some two minutes and come and watch a content that you've used more than two weeks to create. And they will scrutinize you. But it's fine. <laughs> we are okay. <laughs> Good. And you have uh, a show coming up in uh february yes please. tell us about it i did uh, my first comedy special um my missing tooth that was when i had a, a gap in my tooth i did a show. i like to uh, circle my my comedy around my life mm -hmm. so i could i could tell people 
uh, what is going on in my life that uh, is even funny. But at the other side, it's not funny. I want you to learn something from it. So my missing tooth, I proposed to my then girlfriend on that same stage. And now? She's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, after I proposed to her, people were like, okay, we are waiting. Yeah, we are waiting. Yeah. And people would actually send me DMs. Killer, you know, if you can't propose to the girl like that, then left her more. Charlie, we did wait, we did wait. So eventually we got married. <laughs> and um, I, I still want to continue with the journey. So I, I told you about my missing tooth, what happened, and I got a missing tooth. Now I'm married. So I want to tell you about sex after marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so I titled the uh, show Sex After Marriage. I, I want us to um, communicate. We have a vibe where people feel marriage is some kind of um, cage, and some people feel it's some kind of privilege. I, I, I have a lot of things to talk about. So I want us to feel free and talk about sex. You know, growing up in the Ghanaian community, you are not allowed to uh, talk about sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't remember. I even had a chat with my mom or my dad to ask him, what, what was your favorite sex position? <laughs> like, <laughs> hey. Yeah, but bro. <laughs> but you know, we, we have to know. Mm -hmm. you, you get it. You can't even watch uh, TV with your parents and then there's a kissing scene. You know that kind of thing. You <laughs> Eventually, you start sleeping and yes. You see, I want us to, uh, to, to educate ourselves whilst laughing and then uh, growing into a generation where we would um, be associated to our, our kids uh, and the future. So we would feel free to leave and then our, our kids or our brothers will be able to communicate to us sexually, emotionally, any which way they want to communicate to us, they should be able to. Reason I'm doing the show, Sex After Marriage. And um, the ticket is, uh, you see, funny enough, um, 14 February is on, um, uh, it's Monday. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing the events. Friday. So Monday is work. You cannot leave your work and then go out and chill. So the weekend, that's Friday, I have the show for you. And if you can get tickets for 60 Ghana City single, couple, double, or if you have a friend you want to come here from me, double is 100 cities. But if you want a VIP treat where you hear the jokes first before the rest <laughs> of the people, yeah. you pay 150 cities. Yo, 150 for VIP. Andre said this for double 64. Where's the venue? Uh, the Snap Cinemas, the AMA BOD. Yes, you have a double ticket already. You'll be coming with your IP. Yes, yes. So we, we, we'll be representing. What's in the future for you? Uh, what are the new things you want to explore? Uh, perhaps looking around how uh, comedy is moving into different formats. Yeah. What are the plans for you? Yeah. Yes, uh, so uh, we've done a lot of investment into it. So uh, I'm looking at um, collaborating with um, 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 other uh, production houses. Mm -hmm. I want us to do contents that even in 15 years time, you still watch, enjoy the funny part of it, and then still have quality, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. Because the videos we've done previously, mm -hmm. good content, but you see, as time revolves, you are, when you are playing it, it, it begins to uh, pixelate. Mm -hmm. You don't get the quality. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at those videos in five years to come, they wouldn't make sense. And people would not love to watch it. Mm -hmm. But then maybe I would have retired, but those videos, if I had shot them high definition, mm -hmm. would still be making loads of uh, income for me. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you come to income. I want to ask you, is, because obviously you started with the phone and now you're investing into cameras. Yeah. Uh, is this paying off for you? Yes, it's paying off. I, I married, because of comedy, I married. I have two cars. I have a shop. So uh, for somebody who wants to come in, what are the avenues to make revenue from what you're doing? One, content. Two, production. If you want to do um, 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 skits, you want to be a content creator, your content and then your production very important and when it comes to the monetization, monetization how do you how do you do it right now you know how youtube is going about it so we are trying to play along but then uh, then again we still have uh, companies who would actually want to um, sponsor uh, pay for you to put them in your videos some would even just need uh, you to put a squeeze bar and this is money mm -hmm. and if you have two or three companies 
um, being an influencer or even a brand ambassador to them, you, you'll be okay. So the thing is about investment, invest into the craft. The companies are out there, they are watching. So MJ, final words, uh, what do you have to tell uh, your fans and new ones that are coming? So to the new people, please, um, when we do something and you want to scrutinize this, please, let it be strategic. You see, this is something we've invested our whole life. This is what we do. And sometimes your words might end up breaking us. You get me? We are all human. So be very cautious with the kind of words you put out there. You wouldn't see that. Maybe I wouldn't see it. Someone else will see it and will even be broken more than I am. So please be mindful of the comments you make under people's posts and stuff. Someone might even have died because of you. <laughs> you don't know. And to uh, my fans, my loyal fans, Charlie, thank you guys. You people are the reason why we are still doing this. Without your support, we will post a video and we even not get one view. So keep on supporting and we also keep giving you good content. See you on 18th of February at the Snap Cinemas for Sex After Marriage. Let's talk about sex. All right, it's a wrap. See you same time next time. Bye-bye.